Today we're going to talk about connecting GitHub Actions to AWS using OpenID Connect. Up until a few years ago when you were configuring a CI system or really any third uh, party system uh, with your cloud provider, you needed to create long-lived credentials. Um, so in AWS this would be an access key and secret access key associated with an IAM user. And those are, can be really painful to manage um, long-lived credentials like that and to rotate them and to keep all of your systems up to date. And good news for us is that in October of 2021, GitHub announced support for OIDC for secure deployments. And today I'm gonna walk through um, the configuration of that so that you can use it in your GitHub action workflows. So you see a diagram here of how this works taken from GitHub. And what's happening here is that when you run the workflow, it's going the job is going to request a JSON web token from the GitHub identity provider. It's going to provide that token and the ARN of an IAM role to AWS. Now before any of this runs, we're going to configure AWS so that it has a trust relationship uh, with the GitHub OIDC provider. So since that trust relationship is established and, and we're sending in the role, what AWS is going to do is it's going to validate the claims that are in that JSON web token and make sure that they match the conditions that we specified in our role. And if the conditions pass, then AWS is going to send back temporary credentials to the workflow that it can use to run deployments or other changes that need to be made in our AWS infrastructure. The example application that I'm using is a Python Lambda, and it's using CDK here to provision a Lambda function and an API Gateway REST API. So we'll go through it, the deployment manually. And this is what we're going to be automating with GitHub Actions a little bit later on. So now that our infrastructure has been deployed, we can go ahead and curl the endpoint and we get back a response from Lambda and we'll update this later on. So the first thing that we're going to do is to go ahead and um, go to the IAM console and the AWS console and add provider. And this can sound a little bit confusing. We're gonna select Open ID Connect and we're not actually creating an identity provider here. What we're creating is a trust relationship between AWS and the GitHub identity provider. So I'm gonna go ahead and provide that IDP endpoint. We're gonna get the thumbprint and this is the signature so that AWS is able to to trust the uh, the certificate that's being that's being used to encrypt the JSON web token, and the audience is going to be set to sts.amazonaws.com, and this is the audience that's sent as a claim in the JSON web token. Now that we've created that, we're going to go ahead and um, create a role. Uh, that can be assumed by a principal that is using that identity provider. When we go to create a role, you might think that you can select web identity. And if we do that, we can see our new IDP here and we can even select our audience, but this doesn't work for a really critical reason, which I'll explain in a second as I go through this as an example. So the problem with this approach is that this condition right here, um, this would essentially allow any GitHub action to assume the role that we're creating because it's only being limited to this audience of sts.amazonaws.com. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to update this condition to only limit access to connections from our repository. I'm going to go ahead and copy it though as a starting point. So I'm gonna select custom trust policy. I'm gonna paste in what we have so far and I'm gonna make a change to the condition. So a couple of important changes here are that I 
changed it from string equals to string like. And I did that because I have a wildcard here that's going to enable me to run uh, workflows from any branch in my repository. Now that I've created the role, it can't actually do anything yet, so I'm going to go ahead and add an inline policy. And this policy is going to allow the role to run CDK deployments. So now our setup in AWS is complete. We've created the identity provider entity, which establishes that trust relationship with GitHub's identity provider. And then we've created a role. And in that role, we've said specified that only identities that, um, that claim to have the uh, Amazon audience and the subject of the GitHub repo that we're connecting from are allowed to assume the role. And then we've given some permissions to that role. So next, let's make some updates to our application. So there are just a few important changes that we have to make here. First of all, this is really important right here. Um, we have to update the permissions and give write access to the token. And this is required for connecting to the, uh, for the job to be able to connect to the identity endpoint and receive the token. And if we're going to set that, then we also need to specify read on the contents. Normally, you wouldn't need to set this, but since we do specify write on the ID token, we need to also um, specify that we have uh, read access to the contents of the repository. And if you don't have that in there, uh, the workflow is not going to be able to fetch the repository. The next thing we need to do is grab this ARN right here and what we're doing here is we're configuring this GitHub action called configure AWS credentials, which does a lot of the heavy listing, a lot of the heavy lifting for um, configuring the job to use AWS credentials. It supports OIDC. So um, all we need to provide to it is the region uh, that we're using and the, uh, the role that we're going to assume, and it will take care of the rest. So now that we've added our workflow, we can go ahead and Push it up to GitHub. And we should see our workflow running now. Okay, great. So we can see that it's passed uh, the step of configuring the AWS credentials. So that was successful. And now it's going to be running through the deployment, which we haven't really made any changes to our stack yet. So we'll go ahead and test that out. So we go ahead and push our code change. 
and we can see that our new stack is being deployed. And now if we run our curl command again, you can see that the response has been updated. So we've been through a successful code deployment. We've configured AWS to trust the GitHub identity provider and created a GitHub action that uses OIDC in order to authenticate and authorize uh, with AWS. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Check the description for this video for a link to all the code that I've used and for examples. Thanks again.